Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy standard RRS jaw coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy coupling installation guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website under Installation Instructions utilizing the Resource tab. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout-tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The following components have been included with the purchase of your Lovejoy RRS jaw style spacer coupling. You should have two jaw style hubs and a spacer assembly which includes the spacer, two retaining collars, two snap wrap spiders, and cap screws. Always inspect the components to ensure you've received the proper parts and review your application details to ensure that this is the proper coupling to accommodate your application requirements. The type spacer we are installing in this video is a style 1 and it is important to note that the different styles will affect where the retaining collars are mounted during the installation. Shown here are the four standard styles. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the jaw coupling installation guide readily available when installing a jaw coupling. This guide contains charts that show the allowable coupling misalignment and the torque settings for tightening the set screws. Some installation guides also contain performance and dimensional information important when confirming the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, a dial indicator, a calibrated torque wrench, an Allen socket to fit the set screws, a Phillips head screwdriver, vernier calipers, a micrometer to measure the shaft diameter, a gap micrometer, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean up any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and the keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub should also be clean to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Before installing the hub, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side-to-side -side movement. The end of the key should line up with both the end of the shaft and the hub. There are four types of spacer couplings in the RRS product line. From the installation guide, determine which type you are installing. In this video, we are installing an RRS Type 1 spacer coupling 
and both retaining collars will need to be placed on the spacer before installing the spacer. With type 2 and type 3 spacers, one collar may need to be installed on the shaft prior to installation. Please note that the Lovejoy RRS coupling hubs are manufactured with a clearance or slip fit and the hubs should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. The set screws should be tightened to the recommended torque settings using a calibrated torque wrench. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the set screws are not tightened properly, the hub could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the set screws are too tight, they could damage the key, the shaft, or the hub. We will tighten the set screw in one hub to the required torque and the second we will lightly tighten to allow for a minor adjustment after the equipment is moved into place. Now we will carefully move the equipment into place, measuring the gap between the ends of the shafts with a gap micrometer. Your measurement should match the distance between shaft ends or BSC dimension for the length of spacer being installed. This dimension should match within plus or minus 1 64th of an inch. Using the torque wrench, tighten the set screw on the second hub to the torque specified in the installation guide. If the hubs are not too far apart, lay a straight edge across the hubs to check the basic alignment. If space permits, this measurement should be done at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock without rotating the shafts. The offset between the two hubs should be less than 1 64th of an inch to prevent damage to the coupling or equipment. The angular offset between the two hubs should be less than one degree. If the alignment exceeds the allowable amount, realign the equipment to correct this condition. If using a dial indicator, mount the indicator on the driver's shaft with the sensor touching the hub on the opposite shaft. Rotate the shaft with the indicator to the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock positions and make notes of the deviation on the dial. If this exceeds 0.015 15 thousandths of an inch, adjust the equipment to correct this condition. Prior to positioning the spacer, slide the two collars facing outward onto the spacer. Position the spacer between the hubs at this time. If you start inserting the spider from the bottom side of the coupling, it will aid in supporting the spacer during this part of the installation. Wrap a spider around the hub and the spacer, inserting the legs of the spider between the jaws of the hub and the spacer. When the spider is in place, slide the collar over the spider to prevent the spider from coming loose. Now repeat this for the second spider. Insert and tighten the retaining collar screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to within the specification, remove the tooling and materials away from the shafting and coupling. Double check tightness for all set screws with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. Equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy, building trust since 1900.